What's going on everybody? It's Max here and today I am partnering again with Paradox Interactive to bring you the top 10 things I wish I knew sooner in Stellaris. Now I've been playing for several hundred hours at this point and I feel like I learn something new every single time. But you get to a point where you really start to become an expert at the game and not a lot surprises you. Until that one little thing that you learn that would have helped hours and hours ago. That's what this list is all about. Let's jump into it with number one. You already know that crew quarters on star bases reduce the upkeep cost of docked fleets by 25%. It's helpful to have your doomstack stationed on a forward location and ready for the next war with your neighbors. But maybe you've spent some time reorganizing your fleets in space and forgot to actually dock them at the star base afterward. So keep an eye on the outliner and it'll give you some extra information about your military ship's status. Ships that are actually docked in crew quarters are shown in green in the outliner. Ships that are docked at an upgraded starbase without a crew quarters are marked in yellow. Ships with active orders have a little icon denoting what their current order is, and ships that are idle in space outside of a starbase are marked in red. Ship weapons come in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. And while you might think that bigger is always better, weapon size has a massive effect on a ship's effectiveness against an enemy fleet. As ship weapons increase in size, so too do their range and damage. But meanwhile, their tracking speed falls off considerably, and this has a big impact. Tracking speed is the weapon's ability to rotate and aim at its target. So if a weapon can't actually point at the thing it's supposed to destroy, well, it's not going to do much damage at all. Because large weapons are so slow to aim, they're best suited for bombarding large, slow, far away targets like battleships, titans, juggernauts, stationary star bases, or ships that are approaching you. While smaller weapons are better for tracking small, fast swarming ships that are up close like corvettes. Analyze your opponent's fleet compositions and plan accordingly. If you're facing a corvette swarm, then you should protect your battleships by accompanying them with a few small weapon platforms like destroyers or cruisers. You can also use this info to design efficient defense platforms. A large turret weapon boosted by the target uplink computer on a starbase is able to engage against enemy ships at a massive range and should be able to fire several volleys even at corvettes before they're even able to return fire back at you. Piracy can be a major thorn in your side if you create long, undefended trade routes in your territory. So to prevent pirates altogether, use the hangar bay modules on star bases for the maximum trade protection and distance. And if your empire has built extra wide, consider using a fleet of corvettes to patrol high value trade routes. The piracy suppression and trade protection stats on ships and on starbase modules denote their effectiveness at preventing pirate attacks, and corvettes, out of all the ship types, have the greatest effect against piracy. Whether you're building a new naval fleet or you're just before wartime, make sure you head to the fleet manager and ensure that your fleet's home base is set to a forward shipyard location. Ships that retreat or disengage from a losing combat will return to their home base location, so it's much better if you have your ships return to the front line for reinforcements than all the way back at your capital. Clicking on the return button for a fleet also sends your fleet back to their home base automatically, so consider building a crew quarters there or your equivalent module to reduce their upkeep while they're docked. Setting your assault armies to aggressive stance will make them automatically follow your naval fleets and land on planets that they feel they're statistically likely to beat in ground combat. All you gotta do now is build up an assault army large enough to overwhelmingly defeat the defensive forces on each of your opponent's planets. Set it to the aggressive stance and let it handle the rest. Now you can pay your full attention to your naval fleet movements and let your armies handle the rest themselves. You can also land your assault armies on your own colonies to fight alongside your planet's defensive armies. Defensive armies are spawned from soldier jobs, primarily from strongholds and fortresses, but also from various other buildings, including your colony's capital. But recruiting and landing assault armies on planets will further bolster the planet's defenses during an attack. Just note that assault armies have a couple of downsides compared to their defensive counterparts. They cost minerals and time to produce, 
They have much higher energy upkeep costs than soldier jobs do, and they don't benefit from the defensive army bonuses in your technology or your tradition trees. So use them as a spot defense, but maybe not as your primary defensive army. Fully researching your civilization's precursor leads to some massive benefits for your empire. And without spoiling what those benefits are, there are several ways to speed this process up. Be sure to keep an eye on the anomalies that appear in systems that you've explored and surveyed. Sometimes these anomalies themselves give hints of being related to your precursor civilization, so you can prioritize researching those anomalies first. Be sure in the early game to repeatedly check in on the situation log and check your process of your precursor research. You may have accidentally left some incomplete projects around the galaxy that your science vessels can now follow up on. And if you're playing with the Ancient Relics DLC, you can spend minor artifacts earned from archeological digs and the precursor sites to automatically discover an additional precursor site. This can be super helpful if you're struggling to find that final clue for your precursor, or you just want a leg up on your competition. Managing an empire made up of multiple species can be complex, so you should understand some concepts around species management. Your population on each planet grows based on the pops that already exist there, and any migration or immigration access that other species might have to it. Planets tend to prioritize growing pops of a species that are underrepresented on the planet, with the same citizenship and adequate habitability of the planet's existing species. So, signing a migration treaty with an ally might see that your planets begin growing with their pops on your planet instead of your own. If you want to restrict which population grow on each planet you own, you can enable the population controls policy and manually choose which pops grow on each planet. Just know that this comes with a massive 10% pop growth speed reduction. So be sure to weigh whether it's actually worth signing that treaty before blindly accepting it. Your species can also be augmented after researching the robo modding or gene modding technologies. Opening the Species panel from the left menu and clicking Create Template brings up a pretty familiar looking window where you can add and possibly even remove traits to perfect your species mid-game. Each template can be applied to your entire empire, or you can apply templates selectively by planet, which enables you to further specialize your planets and maximize your research and technology production. Don't forget that to actually complete the gene or robo-modding, you have to head to the situation log after assigning the template and begin the special project there or the process will be canceled. Remember too that sometimes a robot or a pop of the old template will be produced during the time that the special project is underway. This might leave one or two pops on planets that your planets might prioritize for growth. You should check the species panel after every successful project and possibly run a second project to clear up any pops who got left behind. FTL inhibitors is an incredibly powerful defensive technology for wartime. It prevents attackers from traveling through systems that you own until they fully control not only your star base, but also any planets with fortresses built on them. That part is really important. If you want the full benefit of FTL inhibitors, you're going to need the technology to upgrade your strongholds into fortresses. That means researching the ground defense planning and global defense grid techs in the society research tree. These two combined will vastly slow down attackers and require them to spend considerable time and resources in taking all of your star bases and planets one by one. And it will significantly increase the value of having choke points with planets in them. Lastly, there's some hidden knowledge tucked away in the technology tree. So if you're going for FTL inhibitors and the military techs we mentioned, you're going to want to know how to make them appear more consistently. You probably know that tech leaders with specific specializations increase their speed at researching that type of technology, but they also increase the likelihood that the type of technology will appear in your research options. A military theorist assigned to the society tech tree will actually increase the likelihood of military technologies to appear in the research options. But let's take that one step further. There are also secret modifiers behind the scenes that increase or decrease the likelihoods of every technology to appear as a research option. 
Things like your empire's ethics, galactic events, or even unlocking unrelated technologies will impact how likely it is for you to see certain technologies to appear in each tree. So if you're gunning for a specific tech, you can learn what modifiers make it more likely to appear by checking out the full tech tree on the official Solaris Wiki. And those were my top 10 things I wish I knew sooner in Solaris. Now, maybe you knew all of these. Maybe you've been playing for thousands of hours and you are an absolute advanced expert. I'd love to hear what your number one tip for Stellaris is. Maybe that super secret hidden thing that nobody else knows about but you. Let's see it down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you want more tips and tricks and a full tutorial for the game, you can check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Max the Catfish. Until then, take it easy.